This is Twit. Because apparently it is small computer day, we also have the CompuLab Fitlet. <laughs> Smaller than a nook. Sense. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a theme apparently. Um, Smaller than a nook, AMD APUs from the E1 to the A4. Which CompuLab claims, writes Scott Show, are more powerful than nooks of comparable prices. Uh, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, Linux Mint, officially classified as industrial PCs, and the five-year warranty reinforces that association, but others might also be interested. Um, nice, clean design. Uh, Very much so. pair of 3.5 millimeter stereo audio jacks, one in, one out, spit of port, uh, four USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, two HDMI 1.4 ports, which I thought was interesting, uh, a pair of gigabit Ethernet ports, and suddenly I'm thinking, this is a server box, man. Uh, 802.11ac, uh, micro SD card slot, eSATA port, uh, rated at six gigs per second, a serial port because industrial, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. Because uh, like you know, I actually it's funny. I was I was handling you know a, a serial port device, a uh, a uh, a uh, OBD2 reader. Uh, that's a great OBD2 reader, but I don't have any laptops with uh, <laughs> with uh, serial ports anymore. Um, so the Fitlet X is similar to the above, except it has four gigabit Ethernet ports uh, and it loses one of the USB 2.0 ports. Um, some interesting stuff going on there. I mean, the TDP on these are tiny. Um, you know, the Fitlet B is is like 3.95 watts with an AMD E1 6200T AP running at one gigahertz. So these aren't going to be speed demons, but these are low powered, simple boxes. And they're starting at like 130 bucks for the bare bones version uh, of the entry level Fitlet B. I think these are really interesting if you're, if you're in kind of an industrial situation or if you need something super simple to control a 3D printer. Um, this is, the prices on these are really tempting. So... Yeah, it's interesting. Fit-PC.com is the website. And the Fitlet 10, is the pricing on there? Of course it's not. <laughs> no, I, the one you want, nah, why would it be? Never the one I want. Well, you know. <laughs> wait, let me click on the buy. Oh, wait. I go to Amazon. Here we go. It's going to be here, Ryan. This time it'll be here. No. It's waiting for me. no. I know, but I can dream, can't I? <laughs> <laughs> you can try. I can try. And you know what? I'm not going to get what I'm looking for. Fit PC3. No. Nope, that's not the one I want. In any case, uh, if you're looking for a smaller footprint uh, with a ridiculously low amount of power consumption, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking like, oh, man, you know, could I I could turn it into a router. I could turn it in. There's a lot of cool stuff going on with that with those with dual gigabit ports. Yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited to get my hands on uh, the new Intel Nook that we saw at CES, the new Broadwell-based one, right? The Broadwell-based yeah. Nook is going to have way more performance than either this Fitlet or uh, the, Live, uh, the Leva X that we were talking about before. And then even, hell, I want that, that Intel compute stick, right? I want to mm -hmm. see what that can do uh, <laughs> as well. I think we're supposed to get the Nook like maybe early next, maybe early February or something like that. It was supposed to be pretty soon after CES. So I'm hoping, hoping it will be soon. So um, looking forward to those devices. What's, it's just, it's just so cool what you can pricing? do. It. What's the pricing on the Broadwell Nook supposed to be? More than that. Um, so <laughs> it's, you're probably looking at five to $600 once, once you buy an SSD to put in it. Right, because it comes as a bare bones, which means no memory, no SSD. It'll come. It does come with wireless. The new Broadwell ones have wireless on the on the motherboard itself. So you'll have to buy an SSD, and that can obviously change your price dramatically. You can get a 60 gig or 120 gig M.2 SSD if you want, or or maybe it's MSAT. I don't remember. Um, or you can get up to like a 500 gig, right, and and make it like a like a full size or close to like a full capacity notebook or, or, you know, mainstream desktop type thing. And then memory, you can get four gigs or eight gigs or whatever you want to get. So um, I, I, I'm, I've used the Nooks for several other projects. You know, I built one for my dad a couple of Christmases ago um, for him to play flight simulators on. It was something simple they could put underneath their TV in their living room. It didn't take up any space. It doesn't make any noise. Um, right. And the Broadwell ones will only be doing that again doubly so that and the gigabyte bricks it's kind of interesting to see that 
how that side has taken off. I have not visa mounted any of them yet. I think it's because most of my monitors, if I'm interested in having them visa mounted, are like already visa mounted. So, you know, there's only one visa mount on these things. I want to use a, I want to use like the Intel Nook as a server, but the storage, I just can't pack enough storage into it to make it work. The new ones will have USB three, so you could attach uh, a fast external. You know, USB three NAS device, like a like a like one of the new Drobos or something. If you wanted, um, that would be an option. That's probably something we'll look into here because we're still using a, a Thunderbolt based thing. That's a little bit finicky every once in a while from Promise. So, <laughs> they should be neat. I'm eager Storage to test them out. Should not be finicky. <laughs>